Today, we'll be going over the rise and fall of three of the most iconic original troops in the game, so let's just get right into it, starting with the Barbarian. In the early days of Clash of Clans, Barbarians were one of the most loved and most frequently used troops in the game. However, in recent years, it seems that many players have completely overlooked and abandoned them. And today, we will explore the history of the Barbarian and understand why they have faded into obscurity. Barbarians were not only among the original troops available in Clash of Clans, but were also one of the most versatile and cost-effective options for players, particularly in the early stages of the game. At Tunnel Level 1, players could unlock Barbarians right away, and they became a staple troop for many different reasons. One key factor contributing to the popularity of the Barbarians in the early game was their ability to tank defenses for a good amount of time. While they were individually no way near as tanky as the Giants, if you use them in groups, you could have a couple of the Barbarians tank while the rest did all the damage. This made them useful for many different situations, mainly in just mass barbarian attacks or the barge attack, which combined barbarians and archers. But they obviously did have their drawbacks. At Town Hall 3, the mortar was unlocked, which was the first defense that could do splash damage, which was really bad for the barbarians since they often traveled in groups and just 2 or 3 mortar shots could kill an entire group of them. This made players have to think a little bit more about how to approach the base, but in general it still wasn't actually that big of a problem since it was only one mortar in a relatively small base. And another problem for the barbarians was the bombs, since similar to mortars, they also did splash damage which could hurt a lot of the barbarians at the same time. So, at these lower tunnel levels, a typical army composition included a mix of barbarians, archers, and sometimes giants. The strategy often involved deploying a couple of barbarians to test the waters, which could mean either setting off some of the bombs or baiting the mortar, and this was then followed by a surge of barbarians and archers to deal the majority of the damage. At Town Hall 5, the wizards sometimes replaced the archers as they were considered overpowered for the lower Town Hall levels and did a ton more damage than the archers, but it was also at Town Hall 5 that the wizard tower was also added into the game, which was just another defense that did a ton of splash damage. And I'd say that Town Halls 5 and 6 were really when the barbarians started experiencing their downfall. One reason is because there were just so many more defenses and trap that just made it a lot harder for the mass barbarian and swarm strategy to actually work. The bases were getting too big and that made it harder for the barbarians to destroy everything and stay alive long enough. The barbarians started to become more of a secondary troop than a primary troop where they would be used to just pick off some buildings or help with funneling. And at Town Hall 7, the dragons were introduced into the game, which, like I've mentioned many times before, led to the shift in more air attacks, which just naturally meant that barbarians and other ground troops would be getting used less. And even if someone were to use ground troops, they would most likely use the archers or wizards because of their range. This kind of reduced the barbarians to only really having one purpose in the normal village at this Town Hall level, and that was for farming. People would still They'll be using the barbarians and archer strategy for farming since they could get all the collectors on the outside of the enemy base and also be able to get at least the one star majority of the time which was good since that meant they wouldn't lose trophies and this made the barbarians and archers a better farming troop than the goblins plus they were also very cheap compared to other strategies but that would end up not mattering after supercell made it so troops don't cost any resources so now having specific farming strategies isn't as big of a thing and people would rather just use their normal strategies instead of the barge strategy for farming which obviously contributed to the downfall of the barbarians and at the higher tunnel levels you can now use the sneaky goblins, which really are the only troop you should ever be using for farming because of how good they are. But at Town Hall 8, the bomb tower was also added into the game, which, once again, is another splash damage defense, which I feel like was kind of the last straw for the barbarians. I think Town Hall 8 was really the final town hall a normal player could consider using the barge strategy, since after that, the defenses honestly just become way too much for the barbarians and there really isn't anything they can do. Obviously, you will still have the pro players that can 3-star you in the barge at Tunnel 13, 
but for a normal player, Town Hall 8 is really the death of that strategy. Past this stage, the only reason you would upgrade Barbarians would be because of the Barbarian King's ability, since the Barbarians that spawn are the same levels as the ones that you have, so having higher levels would obviously be more beneficial. And the Barbarians from the King are honestly pretty useful, but I just don't think that is really enough for them to be considered good at the higher tunnel levels. And there are also the Super Barbarians, which in my opinion are just extremely disappointing. Their special ability is literally just them getting an 8 second boost in health and damage, which I think is really underwhelming when you compare them to the other super troops like the Archers or the Goblins. This makes the Super Barbarians just not a very useful troop for you to actually spend Dark Elixir on to train, and I think Supercell needs to do a big rework on them to make them a lot better. And from 10 on 11 and onwards, I felt the Barbarians just become obsolete because air armies really took over with the Electro Dragons and there were tons of other ground armies to pick that didn't include Barbarians, plus the Eagle Artillery would demolish any groups of Barbarians. So while it seemed like Barbarians really died around 2015 and 2016, they will make a resurgence again in 2017 with the introduction of the Builder Base. This is because this was a whole new village that once again started from the ground up. And the Barbarians were obviously very useful in the early game. Plus the Barbarians here were the Rage Barbarians, which are very similar to the Super Barbarians, except that they are actually useful here. The Barbarians were really good, but once you unlock the Crusher, you couldn't use the Mass Barbarian strategy because the Crusher could absolutely demolish any ground melee troop due to its insane amount of damage and health. This, however, didn't stop the Barbarians completely. It just required a little bit more planning and some other troops, similar to when the Mortar was unlocked in the normal village. However, eventually at the higher Builder Hall levels, the Barbarians would end up becoming obsolete for the same reason as a home village. But with the Builder Base 2.0 update in 2023, Barbarians would basically just become completely useless and this is because of the new attacking systems. In this, there were way fewer troops available and the Barbarians relied on the strength with number strategy so this instantly made them quite useless, similar to a lot of the other troops like the Archers and Giants. In fact, there really only seemed to be two troops that were actually good in this new builder base and those are the Pekkas and Baby Dragons and obviously the Barbarians can't compete with them which is why they became useless even in the builder base. And as far as the clan capital goes, the barbarians there also aren't very useful. First of all, you have the super barbarians which aren't very good and there really is no reason you would ever use them over the sneaky archers. Plus, you also have the battle ram which breaks walls and then also splits up into multiple barbarians, basically making it more effective and more useful than just training the super barbarians. And there are also just tons of other much better strategies you can use in the clan capital that just make having barbarians pretty useless and something that doesn't really serve a purpose. So overall the barbarians were really only useful in the early stages of the game but once you got out of the early to mid game point the barbarians basically became useless in all three different bases you have. Honestly I think barbarians just need a rework for them to be viable in the late stages of the game and if it's not the normal ones then at least the super troop version since they're meant for the later stages of the game. So reworking them to make them better would probably make more sense. The barbarians followed a pretty similar fate as the giants, which are the next troop we are going to be talking about. In the early days of Clash of Clans, giants were one of the most loved and most used troops in the game. But in recent years, it seems like most people have just completely forgotten about them and stopped using them. And today, we will be looking at the history of the giant and seeing just why everybody forgot about them. The giant was one of the original troops in the game and was unlockable straight from Town Hall level 1. It was the only tanky troop in the game except for the P.E.K.K.A which would get unlocked at Town Hall 8. This would make it a very useful troop and something that was used in almost every army at the lower Town Hall levels. And for the super low level Town Halls, the giant was almost a necessity because no other troops could tank the defenses long enough to deal good enough damage. A typical army at this stage of the game would consist of wall breakers, giants, barbarians, and archers. With the strategy being to drop one or two giants first, then let the wall breakers go and make an opening in the base, 
and then putting the rest of the giants followed by the barbarians and archers. And at town hall 5, the barbarians and archers were typically replaced by the wizards which were considered to be pretty OP at the lower town hall levels at that time. And in some cases, people would even use the healers to heal the giants while they were tanking. But after Town Hall 6 is where the decline of the giants really started. This is because at Town Hall 7 you could unlock the dragon and as we all know and as I've talked about in multiple videos, dragons were extremely OP and considered to be one of the most broken troops in the game especially when you pair them up with the balloons that you unlock at Town Hall 4. This emergence of air armies is partly a reason for why everyone stopped using giants, especially because air armies seem to dominate the higher Town Hall levels. But there was something else that was much bigger that caused everyone to forget about the giants and that was Town Hall 7 and Town Hall 8. These Town Halls introduced three new troops, the Barbarian King, the Golem and the P.E.K.K.A. and each of these was better than the giant in pretty much every way possible. First of all, these three new troops were all considered to be tanky which was basically the whole appeal of the giant but these new troops just did it much better. Starting off with the Barbarian King, well the level 1 King already has more HP than the level 8 giant and by level 11 he has around the same HP as a max level giant. Plus he has a special ability which he unlocks at level 5 that regenerates generates a big chunk of his health and makes him even stronger and faster. And speaking of strength, the king can easily do 10 times the damage as a giant, especially with the special ability. The only downside is that there can only be one king while there can be many giants. But then comes the golem which you can have multiple of in your army. The max level golem has 4 times the health as a max level giant and deals slightly more damage. Plus the golem also deals damage when it dies and spawns in smaller golems that can also tank quite a bit and in a way are like mini giants. The only downside would be that the golem takes up more housing space than the giant. But now comes the P.E.K.K.A. which is kind of like a combination of the king and golem. The P.E.K.K.A has a bit less health than the Golem but does even more damage than the King and also requires less housing space than the Golem. And like I said earlier, all three of these things got unlocked between Town Hall 7 and Town Hall 8 and almost instantly made the giant useless since there were much better options. And there was also another problem that many people sometimes look over and that is spring traps. Up to 3 giants can be killed by a single spring trap which obviously isn't good since giants usually travel in groups. And if a single spring trap can basically ruin an attack, then that strategy probably isn't good. Especially because the giants are at the front of the line and are kind of meant to get all the traps with the troops behind them. And another issue for the giants at the higher town hall levels was the defenses. The defenses got a lot stronger than the giants at the similar levels, which made them quite disproportionate and made it so that splash defenses like wizard towers and bomb towers could deal a significant amount of damage to groups of giants in a pretty short amount of time. Plus at Town Hall 10, the Inferno Towers were released and the single targets could melt through giants and other tankers if other troops couldn't destroy them fast enough. And Town Hall 11 only made it worse for the giants because the Eagle Artillery was released as well as the Ice Golems which were just even more competition for the giant as these were not only stronger and tankier but they also slowed down the defenses instead of just tanking them which made the ice golems even more effective. And at Town Hall 11 you could also unlock the electric dragons which had a similar effect as unlocking the normal dragons at Town Hall 7. And from Town Hall 11 onwards, air armies would really start dominating, especially the Electro Dragons and Balloons. This would reduce the need for ground soakers in general, but would especially affect the Giants since they were essentially the last in line to be picked for an army and the reason typically was just because of their lower housing space. Over the years, Supercell has tried making the Giants better by constantly buffing their health and damage, in fact, the giants have literally never received a nerf. Yet, they just aren't good enough for the higher tunnel levels and are in a pretty similar situation as the Valkyries who have also gotten many buffs but just aren't good enough at the higher tunnel levels. 
And similar to the Valkyrie, it seems like what they really need is a major rework so that they can have some sort of edge over other tankers, since right now the only thing they have going for them is their low housing space. So while in the normal village it seems like giants seem to have died out around 2015, they did make a brief resurgence in 2017 with the builder base. In its early stages, the builder base definitely brought back a lot of the early game metas involving the barbarians, archers, giants, and wall breakers. And it was a nice way for players to use troops that they didn't always use at the higher town hall levels in the normal base with one of them being the giant. The builder based giant mainly served the same purpose that it did in the normal base and was also really only used in the lower builder hall levels. And you could say that the giant was used even less here than in the normal base because at builder hall level 3, you unlock the crusher which is the biggest counter for any melee ground troops since it deals a ton of damage and also has a relatively high amount of health which is really bad for the giants as they do very little damage. The addition of the crusher definitely made it a lot harder to use the giants and made it so that you had to plan your attack much more strategically. But even after the addition of the crusher, the giants were still used pretty often and often paired up with the cannon carts. But like with the home village, over time as the builder halls got stronger and more troops and defenses got unlocked, the use of giants slowly declined. The biggest case of this was probably when you unlocked the witches since those really took over the builder base, similar to how the dragons did with the home village. The mass witch spam strategy was pretty easy and required much less skill to pull off compared to any strategy using the giants. And this, along with other troops, caused the giants to die off and be forgotten in the builder base. And finally, you also have the clan capital, but let's be honest, nobody really ever used the giants in the clan capital even when it first came out. The clan capital already had much better strategies with the main one being the sneaky archers. So the giant never even got a chance to be used in the clan capital and I guess people forgot about it as soon as they saw the other troops available. Overall, the giant was really only useful in the early stages of the game and the introduction of new troops and defenses just made people forget about them and stop using them, which put them in a similar situation as the Valkyrie. But now let's finally talk about the rise and fall of the Wallbreakers. In the early days of Clash of Clans, Wallbreakers were one of the most used troops in the game. But in recent years, it seems like most people have just completely forgotten about and stopped using them. And today, we'll be looking at the history of the Wallbreakers and seeing just why everybody stopped using them. The Wallbreaker was one of the original troops in the game game and it was unlockable at tunnel 3. And it was extremely important as you really needed them to destroy walls since there weren't really any other troops that could effectively get rid of them and there also weren't any air troops either. Which meant that no matter what army you used, you would have to deal with the walls. And due to how useful and strong the walls were at the lower tunnel levels, people would also make bases that even had 2-3 to three layers protecting the most important things in the base, and that was too much for even the archers to shoot over. The wall breakers were used with just about every army since they required only one housing space, and you would only need a couple to make an opening in the enemy base. They were a key part of the army since they were what you really needed to make an effective push along with the giants since their purpose was to tank. Many people would also design their bases around wall breakers by adding things like spring traps and bombs on the outside to hopefully kill the wall breakers before they got to the wall. So the attacker would be forced to try and just tank while destroying the walls using things like barbarians or archers and this could lead to them having a unsuccessful attack. This all really shows how OP and feared wall breakers were at the time but the biggest counter to them was the spiking strategy. This strategy was basically where you would put down single wall segments outside of your base so that the wall breakers would be distracted by that and it would essentially just waste their attack. Many people hated this since it was a very effective counter to the wall breakers, but it also wasn't what Supercell intended 
So in March of 2013, Supercell nerfed the strategy by reworking the wall breaker so that they wouldn't target single pieces of wall if there were other connected pieces nearby. This made the wall breakers a lot better since the main counter was basically removed. Despite this buff, Supercell also implemented a little bit of a nerf to the wall breakers by making them two housing space instead of just one. But honestly, I don't think that affected too much since it was still a very little amount. But the first sign of real trouble and arguably the start of their decline was the balloons unlocked at Town Hall 4. This was the first air troop in the game, meaning the first troop that could just ignore walls, which got rid of the only thing the wall breakers were good for. And it certainly didn't help that the balloons were really good at this Town Hall level and that many people used them. But moving on towards Town Halls 5 and 6, the wall breakers would end up making a bit of a comeback since the wizard was now unlocked and that in itself created many good ground attack strategies that would all really benefit from the wall breakers since a lot of these attacks really focus on just pushing through the enemy base. But at Town Hall 7 is really when you would start to see a shift in the usage of wall breakers. This is because of multiple different reasons but the main one being the introduction of the dragon. The dragon really signified a shift towards air attacks which I talked more about in this video and this obviously meant that the wall breaker wouldn't be needed since air troops could just fly right over the walls. But there are still many really good ground attacks that tons of people still use which meant the wall breakers weren't quite out of the equation just yet. But this tunnel was also when the hog riders were introduced and this was the first ground troop that could bypass walls and it also created a very powerful ground attack strategy that didn't require wall breakers. But Town Hall 8 brought something major and that was competition. Town Hall 8 introduced the P.E.K.K.A which was really like the first troop other than the wall breaker that could deal a lot of damage to walls just by itself and get rid of them fairly quickly. And it also didn't just die right after breaking a wall and was very useful with many other things and parts of the attack. And you could also say that the Valkyries were more competition since they were also unlocked with Tunnel 8 and did a relatively good amount of damage if there were a couple of them attacking the walls at once and Valkyries did tend to travel in groups. These two troops would essentially make it so that wall breakers weren't needed except for one major factor and that was the initial push. While these troops were good in the inside of the enemy base, the wall breakers were still very useful for the initial entrance since you wouldn't want to waste time breaking the outer layer of the wall. Also, this is when the Earthquake spell was also unlocked, but it acted more like the previous troops I mentioned in that it was better for getting rid of the inner layers of walls rather than the outer layers. But there was still enough people to start carrying less wall breakers. And moving on to Town Hall 9, you got even more competition, which was the Jump Spell. This spell let troops just jump straight over walls, meaning that you wouldn't have to use wall breakers or any other troops to destroy them. And it could be used for multiple layers of an enemy base, basically solving the issue of inner versus outer wall layers. And this was also one of the first things that really just replaced the wall breakers completely. Instead of putting down some wall breakers, people would just put down one or two jump spells to push into the base. All of this has been really bad for the wall breakers and you can really see how each town hall just seems to bring in something that negatively affects the usage of the wall breakers. And town hall 10 was no different since this brought the second ground troop that could bypass walls which was the miner. Instead of jumping over them, the miner just dug beneath them, which also meant that it didn't get shot by any of the defenses. And once again, this also created some really strong ground armies that just didn't need the wall breakers. Tunnel 11 introduced the Electro Dragon and it basically had the same effect as a normal dragon at Tunnel 7, so I'm not really going to bother re-explaining it. Plus, I feel like I end up talking about the Electric Dragon in most of my videos anyways. But now we're on to Town Hall 12, which I think is really what ended the need for having wall breakers and majority of armies in the game. This is because Town Hall 12 introduced Siege Machines, with the first one literally being called the Wall Wrecker. The whole purpose of this Siege Machine was to completely demolish walls and just push straight towards the enemy Town Hall. It had a ton of health and that meant it could get pretty far before dying, which is obviously a lot better than wall breakers who just die after blowing up once. 
Plus, the wall wrecker also destroyed any other buildings in its path and carried your clinic castle troops into the core. This single siege machine is what I think marked the death of wall breakers in Clash of Clans, but I also do know that some people still use them for other attacks and when they're using other siege machines. And speaking of other siege machines, there also is the log launcher which is basically like the wall wrecker except that it shoots from a bit of a range and can do more damage over over time. Plus, there also is a new siege machine called the Battle Drill, which acts like the miner in that it goes beneath the walls, but it will still destroy them if it resurfaces near them. Also, something else that I feel like has contributed to the decline in the use of wall breakers is that they just aren't as strong compared to the walls anymore. At the lower tunnel levels, it will sometimes only take one wall breaker to destroy the walls, but at the higher tunnel levels, it usually takes a couple to destroy them. Plus, the defenses are stronger and the wall breakers just die quicker, meaning that all of them might not be able to get their bombs off. All of this has contributed to a massive decline in the use of wall breakers, with the main reason just being that there were better options in all different aspects of the game.